Let's talk MMA for a minute. Blade, Mighty Ducks, Terminator, Die Hard, Born, Austin Powers. So if I mention all those movies, what do they have in common? Great trilogies. The best trilogies. And save that Lord of the Rings and Star Wars crap for a nerd who cares. Don't even come in here with The Godfather. Because the third one damn near nuked the cred of the first two. But if you're looking to add to that list that I ran down of the great trilogies, go ahead and add this one. Stipe. VDC, the third. Because Daniel Cormier apparently is back. He goes, that was such a great fight, and it didn't need to be. It shouldn't have been. And he's right. So I think I speak for Dana White, UFC fans, fight fans, sports fans. Hell yes. I mean, that's potentially really big news. No one, not even DC, knew what DC was going to do when he sat on the canvas after getting knocked out in that rematch fight that he was winning handily against Stipe last month. Remember, going into that fight, retirement was very much on the table. He said as much to me on this program. DC came in the jungle, and a few days before he put that heavyweight strap on the line, he said that might be his last fight. So last month could have very well been the last time we saw one of the best to ever do it. Do it. And his brilliant career would have ended with a bleep ton of regret, at least the way the last fight ended. Now, don't get this twisted. I'm not taking anything away from Stipe. Dude's a badass. He won that fight. He earned that fight. He deserved to win that fight. But DC did admit to ignoring his coaches. DC admitted he fell in love with standing in front of Stipe and turning his face into hamburger meat. He liked the way that felt. He was scoring at will. He liked it. And remember, DC, he can strike now. He can strike. I'm not saying he can't. He was turning Stipe's face into hamburger meat. He can strike, but he is a world-class wrestler. And he admitted on that night, he strayed away from the strategy, he did not listen to his coaches, and he fell in love with his striking, something that he can do at a high level. And he had that plan working flawlessly in round one, so much so that it looked like it was going to be a short night. So maybe he thought to himself, this is it. I got this dude. I beat him before, I'm beating him again. Not only am I beating him again, I'm beating him up now. And look at his face. It looks like hamburger meat. I like the way that feels. And it's my last fight. So let me get in some shots before I get my belt on and I retire as the baddest dude on the planet and I send a message in the process. And then that plan, and the coaches knew it, I think, that plan went to hell because Stipe adjusted like any other great fighter. And he went to work on DC's body. And he had success. And he went down there and he dug to the body. And then he went upstairs and then he finished it. And it was pretty shocking. DC called it the lowest IQ fight he's ever fought. So again, taking nothing away from Stipe. He earned that. He deserved that. But Cormier and everybody close to him believed that he did as much to beat himself as Stipe did. Credit to Stipe for taking advantage, making the adjustments, and executing and finishing. But there's no doubt that DC did not fight his best fight, at least tactically. So instead of walking away knowing that he could have won that fight in August and walking off on that, now he wants to run it back. And not only run it back, but run it back quickly. Because if he could have won in August, he's probably thinking to himself, I know I can win in December if I fight my fight. What's going to change in four months? So who knows? Who knows if he gets that 245 date in Vegas on December 14th? But he said he's willing to do it. He's ready. And right now there is a headliner vacancy on that card. You know, I've said this a million times. Daniel Cormier has got nothing to prove. Nothing to prove. If he walked off right now, even on that loss, he's a Hall of Famer. A top five, pound for pound maybe, of all time. Definitely pound for pound the best human being ever to step in the cage but he's got something left in the tank something he wants to prove he wants to empty the tank and better to do that or try to do that than walking around for the rest of his life wondering what might have been or what could have been or what should have been 
So what you have now are a couple of guys who believe they can win because they both have beaten each other before. And now we've got a trilogy fight to settle the score once and for all with a headlining vacancy available. And maybe to settle once and for all the argument about who's the greatest heavyweight of all time. One last time. So hopefully this goes down. If it's set, we'll get into it. But all of a sudden we have a look at something that might be pretty cool. And by the sounds of it, that might happen. And it might happen a lot sooner than later. And again, the beauty of Dana White and his company, the best fights do get made. Boxing comes up short time and time again again in that regard. But Dana can say, you fight you. You fight him. And he makes the best fights happen. The fights the fans want. And I don't think anybody who likes that sport does want to see that again. And the best part is, if you see that again, I guarantee you'll get a focused and tactical Daniel Cormier. 